We're going to close out the evening with a guy who's going to talk about guilty pleasures. Yeah, so ladies and gentlemen, one big hand for Steve Java. Um, hey, so uh, I'm Steve, and I make video games for a living, which makes me a professional nerd. Now, the best part about this is that I work with other nerds who accept my nerdy hobbies. Board games, role-playing games, liking things with swords, pretending to be a vampire on Friday nights. All of these things all get a total pass, but there's one thing that they just can't get behind, and that is my love of the CW. Now, I have always been a huge fan of melodrama, be it 90210 or All My Children, The Bad Girls Club, Gossip Girl, until the season was fucking amazing. And I, uh, I basically have the taste of a 16-year-old girl, uh, which I'm totally okay with, and as a result, it's not terribly surprising that I love young adult books like The Hunger Games. Now, for those who don't know what The Hunger Games are, uh, The Hunger Games is a book about a dystopian society which sends children off to an island to kill each other for the entertainment of millions. And it's pretty cool. It's an oversimplification of the story. But you can never talk about Hunger Games without some jerk in skinny jeans talking about Battle Royale. Now, <laughs> Battle Royale is a Japanese film about a dystopian society which sends kids to an island where they kill each other for the entertainments of millions. And it's a, really good, it's a really good movie. But people get really uptight about this one came first and that one didn't. And it's like, okay, let's, let's back the truck up because in 1975, Death Race 2000 came out. And Death Race 2000 was a movie about a dystopian society that killed people for entertainment. And at this point, it's like, okay, um, and that's like when you're driving around, you say, oh, old lady, 15 points, that's from Death Race. So at that point, it's like, how many versions of this dystopian murder show are there? And there are, like, a lot. And so then I started thinking about them all. And it's like, okay, we have uh, Running Man with Arnold Schwarzenegger. We have Surviving the Game with Ice T. We have The Hard Target with Jean-Claude Van Damme. We have The Condemned with Stone Cold Steve Austin. Uh, and Mean Guns with Ice T yet again. And I own half of them. I've seen the other half. And, uh, like, it's so cool. It's this bizarre murder subgenre has so many fans, right? And you'd think that we'd all be happy. you think it'd be like, listen, Hunger Games was the number one movie in America about dystopian murder children, we win, but no, we don't win because people get so fucking upset because it's like, this one didn't come first and it's bullshit because it's not Japanese and it's like, man, just take a break and, and at the end of the day it's like we're back in high school in the lunchroom and I don't know about you guys, but like in, in my high school I was at my little nerd table and we had two hobbies, one, shitting on the people at the popular table for making fun of us and thinking they don't deserve it, and two, fighting for social dominance amongst the nerd table. And I have no idea why we felt compelled to just go and like attack each other, try to go and show, oh, I'm, I'm less nerdy than you, we're all sitting at the same place. So on the internet you'll see these charts about nerd hierarchy and they're all the same. And it's all this stuff like, comic book fans are cooler than role playing fans, which are cooler than vampire LARPing fans, which are cooler than fantasy LARPing fans with foam swords. And this thing like, really depresses the shit out of me, because at the end of the day, I'm always on the bottom, you know? Uh, and it just makes me feel like a total chump. But beyond that, it's like we're cannibalizing ourselves for what end? We all like the same stuff, but we want to make sure well, we're still better than you. Uh, and there's a microcosm of this happened last week. There was the premiere of Game of Thrones Season 2, and it happened opposite WrestleMania 28. And I want WrestleMania 28. And so I was getting hate mail from my friends saying, like, oh, are you watching that? And it's like, first of all, Eddard Stark looks just like Triple H. And beyond that... <laughs> It's like they fulfill different needs, you know what I mean? Sometimes I just like a, a political drama, sometimes I want to watch a powerbomb. And some people are like, oh, do you like wrestling ironically? No, I fucking love wrestling. And it's like, I really, I really dislike this idea of it's so bad, it's good. No, no, no. If it's, if it's bad, it's bad. If it entertains you, it's good. It's not so bad, it's good. It's just good. And like... This idea of, like, we can't have entertainment just be entertainment. We can't have something light and fluffy and fun and just enjoy it for what it is, which is why I am proud to say I am Team Edward. Now, this sometimes is a point of consternation with people. At writing conferences, I get really drunk and pontificate for two hours about this. The arguments are always the same. It boils down to two. One, vampires suck in Twilight. Two, Bella's a ter terrible role model. So let's look at these one at a time. First... Vampires suck in Twilight. So they say, oh, vampires don't sparkle. Vampires don't play uh, baseball. Newsflash, vampires aren't fucking real. And so they can be whatever they want to be. And like, in White Wolf book, you stake a vampire, they're paralyzed. In Buffy, you stake a vampire, they explode into dust. In True Blood, you stake a vampire, they blow up in gore and viscera. It's all the same, because they're making shit up. 
you know, and so it doesn't really matter. Now, the Bella issue, that's a little more complicated. Now, for me, Bella is just a lovelorn woman in the vein of Juliet. However, for some people, this is not enough. And a system that I really think is actually kind of a problem is that there's been this um, over-intellectualization of, of authorial intent. And so you see this a lot in, um, in other forms of entertainment. It's the same reason why you'll see um, like news anchors will go and say that the Muppets in Sesame Street are communist manifestos trying to corrupt our children. And it's like, no, you know, it's just, it's just storytelling. And the reason that this is a, a particular um, thing for me is that I am a writer of violent video games. The things that I write about um, have extreme action and violence, human shields and carjackings and murder. Um, and the reality is that when I was in high school, um, my brother's, one of my brother's closest friends was shot and killed in a carjacking. And I write a game that has this. And if I believed for one second that what I do inspired another person to do an act of, of horror and violence and death, I would quit my job in a heartbeat. And I think most people would do that as well. And that's why I refuse to believe that Stephanie Meyer wrote this story about an abusive relationship. She just wrote a cheesy vampire story, and that's it. Like, that's all she was trying to do. And people want to read into this, and it's fun to do that for a paper. But when you're really talking about pop culture, it's not okay, because people just want to entertain it. And when I was in the theater department, I was taught two things. Theater can educate, theater can entertain, and great theater does both. But that does not invalidate one form of art form over the other. It's okay to have something that's just there to be fun, just to make people be happy. That is a worthy goal, you know? And at the end of the day, like, the term guilty pleasure is bullshit because you should never feel guilty about something that makes you happy as long as it's not hurting somebody. And conversely, you should never make someone feel bad for liking something that you don't. You know, in high school, it was cool to go and say, oh, you don't like the music I like, ninner, ninner, ninner. We're adults now. Grow out of that shit and rise above. <laughs>